So it's our honor to get to introduce to you, Legal Shield family, our dear friend, best selling author, $1 million ring earner, and Legal Shield's top income earner, Mr. Brian Carruthers. Good evening. So, I want to talk with you guys here today, and this is not going to be a, me speaking to you or talking at you. I want to talk with you because I am you. You know, I started as an associate, I sat in a seat at a, my very first convention, and I made a decision, because they say big decisions are made of big events. And so today I want you guys to, look, I don't take it lightly, the responsibility when I ask that you trust in what I'm going to share with you here tonight, that's going to be in your best interest. Because we all, as, as we attend these events, we're trusting that the people that are going to come up here are going to share with us information that's going to be to our benefit. Is that, is that correct to assume? So let me share with you a picture. And this picture here was taken just a few weeks ago. And it's my, our two youngest sons, Aiden and Colton. And first day of school, on these little boards, you write what you want to be when you grow up. Aiden wants to be a soccer player. Who am I to tell Aiden that he can't be a pro soccer player one day? Colton, age four, wants to be a Sasquatch. <laughs> now, some of you guys are going to Google Sasquatch. With a, it's a hairy creature that runs around in the woods. <laughs> but who am I to tell Colton that he can't be a Sasquatch? Because we don't do that in our household. So one day, I think he's going to be the best Sasquatch in America. <laughs> Kids believe that they can be anything they dream up, because that's how we're born. We can be anything we want. That's how God created us. But as adults, we, we, we lose this belief because we listen to society or we watch our parents. And our parents did not become what they thought of when they were little. So what I want you guys to do real quick for me right now is close your eyes. Everybody, I need you to close your eyes. If you're here at home, close your eyes. What did you look like when you were eight? Picture what you looked like when you were eight years old. And when you were eight, at that point in your life, what did you think you would be when you grew up? When you were younger, how did you see your future? Are you picturing that right now? Like you did back then? Did you design it? Did you plan to get it? Because where you are today is a result of that answer. Go ahead and open your eyes. Look, you guys, the decisions that we've made over the last five years put us in the spot where we are right now today. If you decided over the last five years to eat healthy, then you're probably pretty healthy. If you decided to go to the gym, then you're probably fit. If you spent a lot of money, you may be broke. If you worked hard and put the money away, you might be on your way to building a nice net worth. But where we are today is a result of the decisions we've each made over the last five years. And as Jim Rohn always taught, the good news is that in any five years, you can change your life. So what I need to ask that you guys do today is make a decision to do something more, do something better, to make different decisions, to get to a different destination, different outcome, five years from now. And I, I, again, I have to be real with you. The title of my talk, Stone Cold Truth. I would be doing you a disservice if I came up here and said things that would make you feel warm and fuzzy, like you're already making the right decisions, you're already doing everything that you should be doing, then why are you here? So, making the right decisions. Today I'm going to share with you a few of those, but here's what I've noticed. Over the last 18 months, this pandemic comes along and completely displaces everybody's life in one way or another. People's jobs were dislocated, they lost their income, you know, people got, you know, got sick, some people lost family members or friends, so a lot of things have happened. But what also has happened it was a forced 
respite from our existing life as we knew it. Whatever you were doing over the last many years, you were just kind of just chugging along. A lot of people just kind of like a zombie, just kind of just, just going with the flow. Like, it's just what I do. It's just, you didn't think about it. But the pandemic caused everybody, hold on a second, a pause. And that's why a lot of people are not going back to work. A record number of people are saying, I'm not going back to that job. They're, they're quitting their jobs. Employers can't find people to fill the jobs right now. There's a couple of reasons. Number one, the rich are getting really richer because it, it takes money to make money and they're making a lot of money right now. I mean, the whole market and everything is kind of melting up. But then you also have a massive audience, a massive population where the government's printing so much damn money they're being paid to stay home and sit on their ass on the couch. And so there's, a, there's this apathy that is kind of blanketing our society right now. And so you may not have thought about this consciously, but I have, and I know it has, it has personally affected me. And I'm a pretty motivated guy. I, I never had to have a sponsor in Legal Shield ever call me up, hey, Brian, go to work. Hey, Brian, make some calls. Hey, hey you coming to the Super Saturday? No, I, I was already self-motivated. But even as a self-motivated guy, I found myself having to go through this daily mental battle over the last 18 months. Now, especially because I'm worth $38 million. Yeah. So I can, I can afford, thank you, my FedEx, but I can, I, I can afford to sit on my ass, right? So, so that's, a whole different, that's a whole different battle. But I'm saying, but whether you're wealthy, whether you're not, or whether you're somewhere on your way in between, all of us have had to deal with this, whether you consciously knew this or not. And so I say this because you may not be aware that you're not on the course that you need to be on to get to the outcome that you all say that you want. And so this whole go with the flow trance that a lot of us are living in, you know, taking life as it's given to you, look, it's not gonna give you shit if you just sit there and wait for it to be given to you. The government cheese is going to run out. No sitting president's going to save you. You know, you ever heard that saying, you know, I, I, you know the, 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 I, I sent the police, I sent the fire department, I sent the Coast Guard, I sent a helicopter. You know, God's saying this to the guy up in, up in heaven because he, he drowned when this big flood came. He's like, I sent every, I sent every sign, I sent every, everybody to help you. And you're like, no, God will save me. Look, here's the thing, guys. You've got to take it upon you. Some of you all have family members that are counting on you. And the, deci and the decision to, look, indecision is still a decision. Sitting there and not operating at peak performance right now is costing you. So let me share with you guys the vision, because if you don't have a vision that pulls you, you need to have a, a North Star vision that, get, that, that, that you drive towards, but it, your vision's gotta be so strong, it pulls you. You gotta feel like this is your calling. Even if it starts, as, it starts out like it did for, did for me, as a part-time calling. So what is the company vision? Look, let me show you what, what happened for me. Sorry, camera crew, I didn't tell you I was gonna do this. So I came to a national convention. I was in Dallas, Texas, when I first got into Legal Shield. And you know what I did? I was sitting out there somewhere, but I actually came down and I looked at, at, at the stage, and I looked at all these people in all these seats, and I said, this all started with Harlan Stonecipher from rural Oklahoma, school teacher. If he can go out there and build this massive, amazing Legal Shield family, I'm like, well, why can't I go do what he did? So I said, one day I'm going to come back a few years down the road from now, and I'm going to have a team this big, just my team, my part of Legal Shield. So before you guys leave here, get the vision of Legal Shield, where this is going to go. Back then, we were at just under a half a percent market penetration. Now we're under 3% market penetration. And you can see the lives that have changed already. But then you've got to have your own personal vision. What is your vision? What, what are you going to build here? Before you leave, come up here, take a look at this, take a look at this, and, and, and envision your team members sitting in these seats. Now, beyond having vision, because that's super important. Some of you guys are just, hey, I'm selling memberships, I'm recruiting people. That's not vision. That's just, hey, being a good follower, doing what you're told to make some money. But there's three things I want you guys to always know that are going to be the biggest factors to your success in this business. Number one, focus. You have got to have massive focus. Whatever you focus on expands. 
If you focus on debt, you're going to get more debt. Focus on wealth, you're going to build wealth. Focus on excuses, you're going to buy into those excuses. So you got to have major focus. And if you believe that Legal Shield can be your vehicle to get you what you say that you want, you will put the focus in. If you don't believe, there's not much you can do because your subconscious mind is going to derail you, it's going to take your attention elsewhere. So number one, focus. Number two, urgency. You've got to be urgent. You can't be like, well, hey, look, you know, we're about 3% market penetration. We've got so much time. We have so many people to talk to. If you act like that, we're in a people attraction business. People don't want to hang out with people that are all la-di-da. People want to get involved with people that are moving and shaking, going places and going places fast. So you've got to be focused, you've got to have urgency, and you've got to be consistent. Every day you should be building your business. Every day. Not just when you feel like it. You know, but guys, I never, I, I, I made so many calls every day. My mentors never had to call me to, to motivate me. And it was seven days a week because I understand how momentum in a momentum-based business like, like we have, I understand how important that is. And so how often did I actually wake up and like go hit the phones, like so excited about it? Now I did it, but I, I never liked it. I never, I don't like reading, but I like, but I read books because I like what I get from reading. I don't like working out at the gym, but I will work out because I like what I get from working out. I will call prospects, I'll do follow-ups, I'll do three-way calls, I'll do this stuff. But look, you might, I don't want anybody to have this excuse in your mind to say, you know what, I wish I could just feel like Brian does. Like, I wish I could just love talking to prospects. I wish I could just love rejection. He just, he just loves rejection. I've, I've never loved what I do as far as the activity, the IPA in Legal Shield, but I did it more than almost anybody in Legal Shield, which is why I got so many personal recruits and why the team, because I, I wanted to make sure that whatever I want the team to do, I got to do at least five or 10x more than that, so I would never be anybody's lid. And so, you know, look, I never felt like it, but I did it. If you say you're full time in Legal Shield, raise your hand if you're full time in Legal Shield right now. I call bullshit. <laughs> You're unemployed. You just don't have a job anymore. <laughs> because I have rare to have ever met somebody in network marketing that went from a full-time job, 40, 50, 60 hours a week at a job for a boss that made sure they did that, those hours, and then they get into network marketing full-time, they quit their job, and they're actually doing income-producing activity eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Very seldom have I ever met that unicorn, okay? It does not take much to just outproduce almost 100% almost of the people in, in, in the business. So if you are full-time, I would encourage you when you go home, make the decision here that you actually are going to treat your business with full-time effort. I'm not gonna talk about a year. I talk about go do it for one week. One week, wake up doing the business, Conk out in bed at 10 o'clock at night after doing the business all day long for a week. Watch what happens to your business and watch what happens to you. Your congruent feeling that you're going to have. You've got these big dreams that you, you talk about, these huge goals that you want. But when your activity is not congruent, you're going to feel a disconnect. And that incongruent feeling is going to actually, it's going to mess with you. I promise you when you really lean in. And look, if you're part-time. You got to do uh, IPA in those part-time blocks of time, those little slivers, five minutes here, 20 minutes there. F figure out how you can put more energy and IPA into whatever allocation of time you've got for your business. Now, the next thing you got to do, and I'm trying to really lean in here today. My, my whole design up here is to get in your head, help you understand some truths, and then give you some things that you can actually take action on, decide on, and implement into your team. This part here, get, getting the right why. Everybody's got a why that they feel motivates them. It sounds great when they say it to themselves, to their team. A lot of times it's very altruistic. Oh, I'm doing this for my wife, my family. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm doing this for my grandkids. I want to be able to support these charities. That all sounds great. I joined Legal Shield, 1998, 28 years old, single, no wife, no kids. And I said those things. 
I'm doing this because one day I'm going to get married, and one day I want to have a nice house for our family and have kids and put them in private schools. And I said that, and all the mature people are like, good for you, Brian, you're a real good man. But you know what the real why was? I was 28, single, no wife. Look at me. So let me explain. So I needed a Ferrari. Because when I go to a bar to find that future wife, I don't know if you guys would understand, but I walk up to a girl, hey, can I buy you a drink? Nope. Hey, can I buy you a drink? Nope. I learned rejection before Legal Shield, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, hey, look, my why is I want to make a million dollars a year. I want to, I want to pull up to that bar in a Ferrari. I'm going to slowly get out of the car when a good looking girl is just coming in. I'm going to walk in, let her see me do that. When I walk up and say, hey, can I get you a drink? Maybe she might change her mind. Now, I'm not, I didn't make this up to try to th come up with something funny to say. That was my real why. I didn't tell anybody about it until I turned 50, and I'm like, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I got Melissa on lockdown. She's in a headlock. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> but that was, the, that was the why that caused me to make phone calls when I did not feel like making a call. I got a sore throat. I called anyway. It's raining out. I went to my briefing anyway. I already had 12 recruits for the month. I still wanted to get a 13th. Why? Because I wanted the Ferrari because I wanted to go meet the girl. Now, whatever your real why is, you guys all have the why you've been telling everybody about, but if your why was as strong as you say it is, then why are you not up here teaching? Right? Why, I mean, why is a business for a lot of you such a business of convenience? You'll do it when there's nothing else to do. Then you'll make some calls, do whatever you got to do. So get the real why. Figure it out. And the, the, the simple question you got to ask yourself is, if my why that I've been talking about is not getting me to work my business every single day, including Saturdays and Sundays, then what's the why that will drive me to do it? I don't have the answer for you. Now, You've got to show up. You've got to lean in. Intentionally lean in to learn. Hopefully you guys came here because you want to find out what you're not doing in your business, not just to validate what you're already doing right. Yes, it's good to get some validation. But we want to make you a great marketer. We want to make you a great business builder. We want to make you a great leader. Those of us that have, has, have experience with all this, we can help you to do that, but it's your decision. When the student's ready, the teacher appears. Sometimes the teacher appears and there's an X and there's nobody standing on it. It's gonna, I don't know that you'll ever find it when you actually show up into the X and there's no teacher there for you. That's not how legal show works. There's plenty of, plenty of, of leaders here. Now, there's two main things that I wanna teach today. These two key points that I'm gonna share with you right now can transform your business. Because these are the most important two things that every one of you guys have got to do if you wanna recruit and retain and build a team and have it really scale. So the first one, what is the one thing that is a gateway activity that you and your team has got to do all the time to grow your business? is prospecting. The one thing is prospecting. You can't sign somebody up that has not seen a presentation. They haven't seen a presentation if you haven't first found the prospect and piqued their interest. So prospecting is everything. If you're not talking to a prospect, yours or somebody else's on your team, you're not making money. In the Building an Empire book, I got a time management chapter in there. And I got four quadrants, 25% of your time talking to finding new prospects, 25% of your time following up on your existing prospects, 25% of your time talking to your team's prospects, and the other 25% on everything else in your business. 75% of your time should be talking to people that are not signed up yet. Now, when you get lazy, when you get unfocused, when you lose urgency, that's when you typically spend any of your legal shield time just talking to people who are already on your team trying to act like you're actually spending time building your business, but other, you're just socializing. You're not growing your business. So there's two different ways to do this prospecting. 
Okay? There's a fast way and there's a slow way, or I should say a more strategic way. So the fast way is coming up with an opening line that you are comfortable with, that rolls off your tongue, that you say all the time to as many people as you can. And what it used to be for me 23 years ago, and going forward, I use this all the time, thousands of times, do you keep your income options open? Write that down. Do you keep your income options open? Do you keep your income options open? Do you keep your income options open? I would ask that, and I'm just looking for people to say yes. But then I found in recent times that I wanted to quantify that a little bit more. So I would say, hey, do you keep your income options open to side projects if the money's exciting enough? Because if I went to somebody who's already a multimillionaire business owner and say, hey, do you keep your income options open? He's going to look at me like, no, I'm good. I make a ton of money. Who are you, kid? Or not kid now, I'm bald and gray. But, but he would say, no, no, go away. So that's why I say, do you keep your income options open to side projects so I'm not portraying that I'm going to show them something that they need to replace what they're doing with. So it's a side project. So do you keep your income options open to side projects if the money is exciting enough? I don't, at anybody at any level in life, they could be a multi-million dollar business owner. If they hear if the money's exciting enough, everybody's got a number. Elon Musk, Steve Jobs when he was alive, I mean, anybody. If the money is exciting enough, they'll add another project, they'll add another product, they'll add another business. So that's the fast one. You can write that down and use it all the time. Do you keep your income options open to side projects if the money is exciting enough? That's a quick one. The second way, the more strategic way, might be a little bit of a slower way, is to craft your story so that you can get your prospect to say, me too. So as you're taking notes, craft story, me too. What does that mean? Well, my goal is to build some rapport. I want to find out what is wrong in their life that this opportunity can solve. Stop selling, start solving. Stop recruiting, start solving. So with that, that, that goes like this. Hey, Mike. You mind if I share my story with you real quick? He's like, uh, yeah, what? what? Yeah, sure. What do you mean? What's your story? I'm like, well, uh, you may or may not know this, but my real estate career is driving me bananas. I'm, I'm working six and seven days a week, eight to faint. I'm telling my friends I can't hang out. I'm not seeing my family as much. I know what it's like to put my fork down at dinner to go take a call to put out a fire so I don't lose a deal because I, uh, I can't afford to lose a deal. And because of all the time I'm putting into it, I've got three kids and they're growing up and they're doing it a lot of times without me because I'm, I'm laying in bed at night like, like, like emotionally like anxious about, you know, the, you know I'm, I'm not being the dad, that, a present dad that I want to be uh, because I just don't have time freedom because my, my work hours. You, can you relate to that at all? And I pause and I, I wait for him to be like, oh, yeah, I feel you, man. Or yeah, me too. And as soon as I got that pause, that me too, I, I get the indication that he gets it, that he feels that way. That's when I say, well, look, let me tell you something. Enough's enough. I, I, was, I, I, I made a decision. I was not going to just keep on going down this path and just letting it remain this, the same way. So I went on a search. Uh, I found some mentors that are entrepreneurs working on a business project. They've invited me into it. And this project is putting me on a path that's changing all that. And let me tell you something. I've never been this excited about my future. You want to see what I found? How, how is Mike, my prospect, going to say, I relate to the fact that you're stressed out, you don't have time with your family and all that, because I, I feel the same exact way. You found a solution? No, but I don't want to see your solution. It works so stinking well. It, it takes a couple more minutes to craft your story, share your crafted story with them, get the me too, I found a solution, I've never been this excited about my future before, you want to see what I found? And that's when they say, yeah, what do you got? That's when you, hey, if I get you a video, will you spend 20 minutes to watch it? Hey, if I get you a link to a Zoom that we're doing later on tonight, can you get on at eight o'clock? That's when you take them down the path and recruit them. So again, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the one thing, prospecting. The fast way, you keep your income options open, blah, 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 or hey, you mind if I share my quick story with you? Now, the second thing I need to share with you guys here today is promoting. Promoting is the number one skill in the entire business that we're in. 
Remember this, facts tell stories sell. You need to use stories to promote anything. Promoting the membership, promoting the opportunity, promoting an event, promoting anything. Stories, stories, stories. And there, everybody, whether it's a prospect or a team member you're trying to promote something to, they are always tuned in to their own favorite radio station, WIIFM, which stands for What's In It For Me. So you might say things that are important to you, that resonate with you, but if it doesn't resonate with them, they've, they've, you got 20 seconds before they decide to turn you up or turn you off. What can you say in that 20 seconds? I'm gonna give you guys an example for Phoenix, promoting for associates to attend this convention. I asked a lot of leaders in our company. I went on Facebook, I put it in there, people put in some great answers in the comments. I said, hey, give me some statements, give me some reasons why associates that are not registered yet should attend Phoenix. And people were saying like, your belief goes up, goes from your head to your heart, you'll learn from the best of the best, you cut down your learning curve. And it's true, 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 that's all true. But if I'm an undecided, or maybe I'm a decided, I'm not going associate, hearing some of those bullet points was not going to cause me to go buy an airline ticket, take time off of work and away from my family to go get a hotel room and come to an event for a few days. Those bullet points weren't resonating with me. You know why? Because it was not solving a problem in my life. I don't perceive that I have a belief problem in Legal Shield. I don't believe that it's not in my heart yet. It's still in my head somewhere. I, it's, I don't know, it didn't, didn't make it down here. I mean, I'm not thinking like that. So some of these things that we have all heard and said to ourselves, we all think they're all clever and great, but, but what does it really take to promote something? Figure out, again, stop recruiting, start solving. We need to find out what problem they've got and we can share with them how coming to Phoenix will solve it. So let me give you a couple examples here. Um, here, I'm going to uh, read you three different stories. Again, using stories. I'm going to read three stories that uh, I think you'll find will be more compelling. I was a parent of two kids, four and seven, working two jobs and very emotional about missing time with them. I got started in Legal Shield to fix that. I finally found what was missing in my business at the convention. And now I quit one job and about to quit the other. I see my kids much more now. Is that more compelling? How about this? I had so many hang-ups that were holding me back in Legal Shield. I could not get myself to make calls and share Legal Shield with people. I was stuck in paralysis and it was depressing me because I did have a big why for needing to succeed. I was convinced by my mentor to attend the company convention and I couldn't believe how right he was. Something happened inside of me there. I no longer have that fear and people are listening to me, uh, listening to me more when I approach them about Legal Shield. That one weekend got me out of paralysis and my business is rocking now. Here's one more. I was torn about going to the Legal Shield Convention because I didn't have the money. My upline said if I wanted to change that, the only way to do so is by going and learning how to get my business moving faster. So I did what I had to do and I got there. It was the best decision. I made three times the income from the, from the business that I spent to go in less than 30 days after getting home. And now my business is on track and my income is trending higher. So again, you take the objection, you take the roadblock, you take whatever it is, lack of time, lack of money, don't believe it's gonna help me or whatever, and you use a story that actually satisfies or removes that roadblock in their head and gets them to realize, oh, I, 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 don't, I don't have money. Okay, well, this person didn't have money. They got convinced to go. They came back within 30 days, made three times that investment, and now their business is on track and making them a lot of money. Now they're, okay, I, better, I guess I better find money to go. So, hopefully you guys understand two things. The one thing is prospecting, and you need to figure out which method you want to do, and you can, I, I mix it up. Sometimes I'm just, hey, keep your income options open to side projects if the money's exciting enough. By the way, I say that fast because I'm used to saying it a lot. Or you slow down, use your crafted story, get that relate, get that me too, and then take them down the path of checking out a presentation. So the one thing, we all need to come out of here massively focused on doing that and teaching that to our team members every single day. And then this last one that we just talked about, promoting. Promoting, promoting, promoting. It's the highest paid, highest paid skill that we will ever have in network marketing. 
And my mentors 23 years ago said something that was so profound, I never lost sight of this North Star. He, he said, get 100 people from your team to a national convention and you are set for life. I want you guys to never forget that. Because when I did that, my business was so strong, it has never fallen from there. Get 100 people from your team to a national convention. It doesn't matter how many people you have here this time, but how many are gonna get there in April for our 50th anniversary? And then how many on the next, and just continue to grow how many people you got to the conventions, and when you get to 100, I promise you're gonna look at your organization, you're gonna be like, I'm set for life. Look guys, success. Success is a decision followed by daily choices. Success is a decision. As we say, and this is, not just, this is not just a clever quip, big decisions are made at big events, at destination events. You're not gonna sit at home on your, on, on, on your couch or in your home office in a chair watching a Zoom and make a decision that Legal Shield is going to be the vehicle that's gonna take you to all your dreams that you want. It just doesn't happen that way. Getting on a plane, flying across the land to a destination event like this, in this environment, amongst these friends and family members, seeing the information, getting the belief up, allows you to say, if these people are living that lifestyle that I want for me and my family, if they're willing, they, they did it, they're willing to do it, and they're willing to help me to do it, then I can make that decision to burn my ships, go home, get disciplined, create success habits, conquer each day, one at a time, even when you don't feel like it, knowing that it will all be worth it. Because I promise you guys this, I've seen it happen over and over again, and I will never tell a lie. If you stick around and you lean in with intentionality to get to be the best you can in this business, I am never retiring until everybody in this room has achieved what you want out of this business for you and your family. See you at the top. Yeah.